What's my go-to framework for building a successful print-on-demand company? Hi, I'm Shimmy Morris and I've been doing print-on-demand since 2014. I started out with simple personalized t-shirts with people's names on the front and I sold over 4,000 of those. It totally kick-started my entire career as I was only 18, 19 years old when I started. I have since done a bunch of different businesses, all very rewarding, but print-on-demand has been the most. Now, a lot has changed since 2014. The companies we use, the strategy, and well, even the types of designs that we sell. And in this video, I wanna go over my exact strategy framework that I share and follow in our paid community. And this framework is, well, I would say the foundations of our entire print-on-demand business. So if you are struggling, you're confused, you're unorganized in your business, well, this framework is absolutely perfect for you. So. Let's go over it. Here is the Print On Demand Hub Framework. It's a really cool infographic that you will be able to download as well. Now, starting with the beginning of the, the, the beginning of the journey is niche. And this is using various research techniques and will create, well, will find a niche that works. Various techniques such as looking on Etsy, looking on the Google, the, the Google, what is a Google? Looking at the Google Keyword Planner tool, looking at Ahrefs to see how popular it is on Amazon, and then just searching on Google. Now, there are tons of little intricacies within finding a niche. You want to see how much competition there is. You want to see if there's proven successful designs. You want to see if there are any funny designs. You want to see what else your competition is selling besides the go-to print-on-demand product, which we all know is t-shirts. I just wanna quickly add, before I go to step two, I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube of people talking about setting up a print-on-demand business step-by-step, step, and I do have one in the works. It's just taking me a little longer because so much of my focus is now on our free and paid community. But this video, I don't want it to come across as Oh, print on demand looks really easy. I just need to follow these steps and I'm gonna be successful. Each one of these steps has more intricacies in them and I'll try and share them as much as possible in this video. But I just wanted you to know that this isn't a sit back on the couch, passive income business. It doesn't exist, it's, it's not out there. So I don't wanna mislead anyone if you think that. So after niche, we come down and we need to start creating designs. So whilst we're in niche, oh, that jumped ahead to printing partner. So whilst we're, it's, why is it moving on its own? No, it's not. Okay, oh, I thought I was going mad. Um, after we've picked a niche and you know we've gone through all the criteria of what makes a popular and successful, well, again, it's impossible to 100% to pinpoint if it's going to be successful, but you can definitely stack the odds in your favor. And then after that, we'll need to come to design. And in design, there's a couple of things that you need to know. Well, so we want 50 to 75 uh, designs. That is the sweet spot for what we're going to be doing here, the platforms that we're going to be using. And when it comes to creating designs, please don't reinvent the wheel, but also please don't just go and steal other people's like designs, like pixel for pixel. What we want to do is find commonality in this niche, and we can do that in various different ways. The main places to look at are Amazon, Etsy, and Redbubble. Now you can also use Google, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. So with, let's, say, let's say Etsy, you would search for the product, uh, you would put the, 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 the niche and then the word t-shirt in, you would see all the different listings. You can sort by star seller, you can even do this little hack where you click star seller and then it reorganizes and in the, in the URL you can change the word star to best and it actually shows you the best sellers. I can't think of another way to actually do this since Etsy removed it a while ago. So I thought that was quite cool uh, for you to be able to see the best sellers. Now what you wanna then do is you wanna take screenshots of everyone's designs, or, or everyone's popular designs. Uh, again, this is not to copy them. This is for you to be able to build a mood board or like a, like on, on like a big board of all the images on Figma. Now, Figma is a free tool to use, it's what we use. And what we do is we collect 50 or even 100 designs on Figma so that we can see commonalities between the fonts, graphics, sayings, all of these different types of things. And we keep it all organized like an Etsy, Etsy, select, Etsy section, an Amazon section, a Google section, a Redbubble section. And the beauty of doing this is it allows you to see what designs are out there. And not only does it allow you to see what designs are out there, it allows you to kind of see what designs are okay to use. If there is an amazing design that you think is great and you, of, of all of your research, you only found it once, that is probably a very unique design. It could even be trademarked. So 
you've got to be careful with that. If you're seeing the same saying pop up over and over and over again, it's probably absolutely fine for you to use. You could do a simple reverse image search on one of those images, put it through Google and just see if it's showing up anywhere else. Sometimes, well actually, crazy, one of my, I don't wanna say most popular products, but one of my popular designs, I did this, this, this method of doing a reverse image search on a phrase that I really liked because I thought mm, that phrase is, is taken. And it turns out that, that person bought their exact design from Creative Fabrica. Now I could have obviously gone and done the exact same thing, but I wanted to make it my own and tweak it. But it's interesting to see that a lot of the designs that you'll find on Etsy or any of these platforms are just pre-made designs that someone has already bought on Creative Fabrica, on Vexels, on Kittle, on Placeit, on any of these platforms. Right, so once you've done your designs, and, and I know there are, there are more intricate details to designs, like when you're actually creating the design, is the placement okay? How many fonts are you using? How many graphics are you using? What's the coloring? There's a lot that you have to consider and a lot that isn't discussed in other videos, but that's not really what this video was about. This is more of a holistic approach, like imagine a, a, a view from a plane looking down at the whole business. You won't see all the little details, but you'll see the big titles. And that's what we're going over. We're going over the big milestone points of the framework. So after that, you need to pick a printing partner. Printing partners can be confusing because there are so many printing partners. It's actually crazy. I've actually got a bag of uh, like 40, a lot of items. I don't know how many items. I don't want to say a number off the top of my head because I don't want to be wrong, but there's a lot of items in a bag from tons of different print-on-demand companies. And I'm in, the, I'm, in the work, I'm in the process of making a video uh, comparing all of them. But I will just tell you straight out, we use Printify. I have gone through so many printing partners and I've landed and ended with Printify for various reasons. The customer service is literally the best. If there's ever a problem, I get a response within three hours. Um, and this is just the generic customer support. And usually they just refund it or they send out a replacement. Because I've been selling on the, there for so long now, I actually have a growth manager, which they give you quite early on. I think I got it after like 300 or 400 sales. They, they, don't, they don't like wait around. They will give you a growth manager who will be able to answer your questions and help you out much quicker, who's dedicated to you. You can get on the phone with them. They're very good. On top of that, the, uh, the quality was good. The shipping was good. I use SwiftPod within uh, uh, Printify. Some people use Monster Digital. I like SwiftPod. I don't know why. The reviews are better and it was the first one that I saw that had good reviews and that also did inserts and custom neck labels. So I went for them. The next you need to do is your brand. Now, brand is more important if you're going to be going down the Shopify route. If you're going down the Etsy route, and we'll discuss that in a second, then brand is still important, but not as important. So with your brand, you need to just come up with a a name, you can use a random name generator, you could use um, Shopify have an AI name generator, you can use ChatGPT, uh, but you wanna come up with a very simple name, don't make it too long, make it memorable, easy to spell, like, you know, this is just a graphic, but like coffee teas. Everyone can spell coffee, everyone can spell teas, done. Um, there's, there's, so many, there's so many different names that you can come up with. Fonts and colors, they are important, but they're not over important. So, so please, please don't overthink brand when it comes to print on demand. Colors can change, fonts can change, even the logo can change. The only thing I would say to try not to change is the um, URL. So if you're buying a domain name, let's say using GoDaddy, because that's who we use, you, you don't want to have to then down the line change your name and then have to do a new domain. What you could do is like if you did end up doing that, you could just set up a domain forwarding. So if you do end up changing your name and you buy a new domain, you can just keep your old one and whenever anyone goes to it, they automatically get forwarded to your new name, but it's confusing and it also looks a little bit dodgy. So after doing your brand, let's continue down the journey to creating socials. So when you are, when you are doing your brand, you need to make sure that the socials are available. Like Facebook, well, no, nah, not so much Facebook, more like Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter if you want, but most importantly, obviously the domain name. And that is what you'll do at this step. Now, you, we've, we've, we've laid this framework out in a way to A, save you the most amount of money, but B, so that it also makes the most amount of sense. So, and, and you'll see why. For example, one of, the, one of the, the, the paths is going to be Shopify here, and we'll talk about that later. Another one's gonna be other, other platforms. But the reason why we, we put Shopify so far down is because a lot of people will start a print-on-demand business based on what 
um, YouTubers or people are telling them to do. And the first thing they do is they get all excited. They come up with a name. They they, they buy the Shopify. Um, they, they sign up to Shopify. They buy the domain name, which costs money, by the way. It's not free. And they end up spending months and months on the niche, on the design, on, on all the other elements on the socials. And it gets to a point where they spent like $200 on their Shopify um, subscription and they haven't actually even uploaded a single design. So that's why we've laid the framework out like this. So you're only spending money when you are like, like perfectly ready to then start getting sales. And that way, as soon as you start spending, hopefully, you know, if, if it all goes well, you can also start making money as well, countering that spending. So you'd create socials and you can use, I can't remember the name um, off the top of my head. It will be on the screen here and you can use this website to put in your brand name and see if the socials are available, see if the domain name is available. It's a really, really cool website. So after creating your socials, let's go down and now we need to make a decision. We need to decide between Shopify or Etsy or both, whichever one you want to do. My go-to is Shopify, but I also have Etsy. I, I, I like to do both. And there's two really cool paths. Uh, well, I wouldn't say path. There's two really cool methods here that you could um, choose. You could go for Shopify first with ads and or Facebook ads, TikTok organic, TikTok, TikTok ads, all that kind of stuff. And you can drive traffic to your Shopify store. And by doing that, you're going to be able to see quickly which designs perform, which designs get sales. And the reason why it's so much faster is because you are sending direct traffic to your store. You are not waiting on an algorithm. You also have no other competition. So it's a very quick approach. I, I hate saying the word quick because I don't want to give the wrong... Uh, I didn't, don't want to give off the wrong impression here because obviously this takes time, but it is a quick approach for seeing what designs could be successful. For example, with us, we uploaded 50 designs. It was something like 50, I can't remember the exact number, but we uploaded a, a, a set number of designs and we sent traffic. We had an ad for each and every single design. So we sent traffic to, well, the traffic went to the overall collections page but every every design had its own ad creative. And that way we could see people clicking on the ad, which design sold best. And once we had that information, we could create a whole bunch of designs based on the most popular selling designs. Now that's going down Shopify. And then what you can do is, once you know what your most popular selling designs are, you can open an Etsy shop and you can list the most popular ones on Etsy. That's one way round. The other way round is to go on Etsy first because it's not free, but it's significantly cheaper. It's about $15 to start up. Well, it is $15 to start up and then 20 cents per listing. There are ways of you getting free listings. You can get 40 free listings. There's links in our community where you can get this. Um, but you start with Etsy because it's like the free or cheaper approach. You upload all your designs there. You see, and you can run Etsy ads, by the way, but like, let's say you don't. You can see which ones get some tra tra attraction, which ones get some sales. And based on that information and which ones are performing the best, you can then go and do Shopify. So both work. Both are really good methods. One is, I'd say, a little bit cheaper, um, but slower. And then one is, I think, like I said, I prefer the Shopify one, but that's because I came into the business with some money to invest. If you've got around $300, go with the Shopify first. If you don't have that, then Etsy is good to go with first. Then we have Facebook ads, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. So this is assuming you went down the Shopify route. If you went down the Etsy route, well, number seven would say Etsy ads. And the reason why, and I'll explain both in a second, like, but let's start with Facebook. Facebook ads, you send directly to Shopify because there's no other way to really get traffic there. I mean, you've got TikTok and Instagram, but um, it takes time to build up organic social uh, following. You know, organic getting organic views can take you some time. Whereas if you run ads, you are paying money for clicks, for views, for conversions. You will get conversions, or you will get, I should say, you will get clicks to your website. So it's a much more structured uh, uh approach where you are in more control. You're not relying on an algorithm to help you out. So that's Facebook ads. That's why we use Facebook to Shopify. Now with Etsy, you've got Etsy ads. And when you list something on Etsy, when you list it straight away, you might show up quite high just so that Etsy can see how you perform. But very quickly, you'll go all the way down to the bottom of the listing because you wouldn't have got any sales and you won't be converting. Etsy ads allow you to kind of go higher up the listing. And as you get 
clicks with your Etsy ads and sales, you'll go up the listing, you'll go up the ranking. Now, at the beginning, you don't want to necessarily rely on Etsy ads to get sales. You just want to rely on Etsy ads to help your overall rank. Once you've got your overall rank, um, and let's see, let's see you're on page 10 when you first start and you run Etsy ads and you're, lo you, you're losing money. You know, you lose like $200. Um, you've got a couple of sales, but you didn't, you weren't profitable, but your rank goes up to page two. You will now be more likely to get organic sales. So I'm not suggesting you pause the Etsy ads, but what I'm saying is it's like a curve. It, 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 it counters it. So imagine the curve is like going up for the amount you're spending and then sales are starting below it and then eventually they overtake it. Um, and that's because once your organic rank kicks in, you'll start getting those sales. Now, the next thing we have is TikTok organic. So after Facebook ads and Etsy ads, you want to then start running some form of organic marketing. And that's because just like we don't want to have to rely on Etsy's algorithm or or, or a Redbubble's algorithm or another platform's algorithm to get us those sales and to get us that rank. We don't want to rely on Facebook ads. If Facebook shut our account down, that's our business gone. You know, if, if Facebook stopped performing very well, that's our business gone. So we want to have full control of our business. And I think a way to do that is building some sort of social following. So I, I say TikTok, but then Instagram works here as well. YouTube works. TikTok and Instagram are probably the two best. And the reason why this is so good is because it's very easy to get views and to get followers on TikTok. One of, so I just started the TikTok challenge with a friend and I think it was our first or our second video. I can't remember off the top of my head, but he got 200,000 views. It's a six or seven second video. It's ridiculous. Like, I have no idea why I got so many views, but it's it's crazy that, and I, 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 I've never had that with YouTube. Like I've literally, well, I've had two, over 200,000 views on YouTube, I think, but it wasn't like my second video, you know? So the way that the TikTok and the Instagram algorithm works with reels and with like the short form content is it can go viral. You know, anything can go viral. So with these methods, I'm not suggesting you create a t-shirt and you, you post the t-shirt on TikTok as the video and hopefully you get views. No one likes that sort of content. You want to create actual real content and then kind of hint that you're also selling designs. Maybe you have the a link in your bio, maybe the video ends with a fade to your website. So that's what we do. We have a generic video, so we like to do listicles. So again, without revealing our niche or anything, let's just say our niche is, um, dogs. I don't know, whatever. Okay. And we would have a funny dog video that could have the potential of going viral. We're not selling anything in this dog video. And then at the end, it fades out for like three seconds and it says, visit the dog t-shirt.com to, to see your, to, to, to get a, a custom t-shirt. That's one way of doing it. And by doing that, you are able to grow much, much better because your reels or your TikToks are able to go viral. Now, another way of doing it is to create your own viral videos so not doing listicles or not taking content from the internet, but actually create your own content, let's see, with your own dog wearing your clothing. So you create a funny video or you create a, a viral style video wearing your t-shirt. And then in the comment, you can say, did you like the t-shirt I was wearing? You can check it out in my bio. So that's another way of doing it where it's very subtle. It's a very subtle way of selling. People really like that these days. After TikTok organic, we have email marketing. Now, this kind of really only relates to Shopify. Um, it's 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 iffy what the, the email situation is with Etsy. So I'm just going to avoid that for the minute and just discuss Shopify. So with Shopify, we use something called Klaviyo. It's an app um, to plug in on Shopify. And I know all of these different apps, people get worried because it adds, adds cost to everything. But again, don't worry, you will, like, if you've got these apps going, you would have been making sales. I wouldn't suggest getting these apps if you're not getting any sales. So we use a, an email marketing uh, app called Klaviyo. It's really, really good. And basically we are able, every single time someone comes on our store, we have a pop-up saying get 15% off, put your email in. So we're building a list of emails that way, but we're also building a list of buyers because everyone who buys, obviously their email goes in. So, you know, on a weekend we can say, you know, weekend sale. July 4th sale, or let's say um, we come up with a July 4th design. So three weeks before the July the 4th, we can send out an email to all of our uh, customers and prospects saying, brand new design for the July 4th, 
Don't miss out. Only 100 available. Or something like that. We can do like a cute little drop. Um, and by having that email list, it's a great way to make extra sales where they don't cost you very much money. You're not reliant on ads or anything like that. And building an email list like this is how you actually scale this business. When it comes to hopefully selling it one day, this email list is incredibly valuable. Now, the reason we put it here at step nine is because if we go back through, you can see at no point do we really need the emails. Maybe, you know, we would have got a couple of sales at step seven with our Facebook ads, like five sales or 10 sales. It's still not that important. We want to start doing email marketing when we can confirm that this niche and our designs are getting sales. We don't wanna do all the work, like I said at the beginning, we don't wanna do all of this work before we start getting sales. We wanna see if our niche and our designs are actually viable and are actually getting sales before we then put in even more work to, for email marketing and TikTok and all these kind of things. And then lastly, we have scaling. Now scaling, there's a few ways to do this. Once you've got yourself a niche design, a store, Etsy, Shopify, both of them, and it's working out, it's then time to take it to the next level, really. And email plays a little part in scaling, of course, but there are other ways to scale. For example, adding more products, such as more designs on t-shirts, but then adding a new range of products. So if you're selling t-shirts, you could add hoodies, mugs, posters, stickers, whatever. So that's one thing. Adding entirely new products, so if you're in the dog niche and you're selling dog t-shirts, maybe you can include actual products. So like that, that, that thing that you, that ball catcher or the ball throw, that long stick with the ball at the end of it that you, so let's just say hypothetically, you sold that on your store. Or let's say a dog collar. Any of these other products that would complement your overall store will help you scale, will help you increase your AOV, which is your average order value. You don't want your average order value to be really, really low because it would mean the ads wouldn't really pay off, the uh, TikTok ads wouldn't really pay off, and the whole thing, it, it will, you, you need to be able to ensure that you're making a good profit margin, basically. So anything to up our AOV and adding a complementary product, adding more products is a great way to do that. Now, another way of scaling is to open up your store into new markets. So let's say you start in the USA. That's where we like to start. It's a brilliant market. Once we're up to the scaling phase, we'll open up our store in the UK, in Canada, in Australia, in Europe. And by doing this, we'll run ads from these um, specific countries as well. And we'll target these specific countries with, you know, designs in our store and all these different elements. And that way we've now kind of gone like global with our with our brand so you start focused and then you expand out and the reason why I don't suggest people go to various different marketplaces at the beginning is because it's a lot of work there's a bit of manual work here and at this point at scaling you'll be able to outsource it that's the whole idea um, but it's a lot of work before you even know how profitable your store can be so I like to say pick a goal Whatever that goal is, let's say you want to get $5,000 in profit a month. Reach that goal with your single US store, with your single product, well, no, with your whole bunch of products, your whole designs, but with your, let's say, t-shirt or whatever your individual product is. Once you've reached that goal, then expand out, add more products, start scaling, start going crazy, go into different markets and add more, I would say, stress to your life, but you're also building the business to be a lot a lot bigger. And that would be the, the, the 10 steps. Now, I have to say, each step is incredibly important and not one to skip out. And like I said at the beginning, this is a holistic approach here. There are lots of intricate details within each individual step. And if you want to take this, um, if you want to get this, you can join our free community. It is in there. And if you actually want to sign up to our paid community where we have, training and one-to-one -one help and audits and uh, coaching calls and live calls and so much stuff for each and every one of these steps and it's a really cool community people are absolutely loving it then the links will be down below in in the description and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment or go straight to the community and have a look at the 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 community board. A lot of people are asking questions. Everyone's getting answers. I spend a good portion of my time now on these two communities, mainly on the on the paid one, obviously, um, helping as many people out as I possibly can. But yes, that would be the overall framework. So if you are ever watching another video on YouTube of someone going over how to set up a uh, print on demand business, whatever, whoever it may be, you know, maybe they have a sponsor, so you don't really know if you should believe them or not. There's a lot of, there's a lot of 
uh, issues at the moment with YouTube and in print on demand. People are just jumping on the bandwagon, making videos about it or getting paid a lot of money from sponsors and making videos about it and not really saying all the ins and outs. This framework would pretty much be all the ins, well, not all the ins and outs, but this framework would be pretty much be all the sections that you need to go through. Like I said, the ins and outs and the tiny little details. Well, that is, there are there, there are lots of steps within each step. Let's put it that way. And that's what the um, the, the communities are for that, I'm, that I've built. And on top of that, I will try and do more videos going into each individual step, but they are very, very, very long videos. Like if I made a full thing for all of this, it would be 15, 20, 25, 30 hours long. I mean like, the Etsy and Shopify thing alone could be three hours each. There's a lot of stuff to consider when trying to make this work, which is why I've built the print on demand hub um, where everything is broken down for you in this specific framework. Anyways, I hope you liked that video. Um, I hope this made a lot of sense. If it didn't, please let me know down below and uh, yeah, I'll see you in next week's video.